I spent some time today watching um, the Japanese honeybees and they are so different than the Western ones in a number of different ways. One is they got the biggest uh, drones. These drones, I'm calling sumo drones. They're massive. They look like, you know, they look like sumo wrestlers of the bee kingdom. And I even had one this morning when I was uh, examining the hive. He was like buzzing around me and I knew it was a drone. I was like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I was laughing at him. He landed, he bumped, he kind of fell over. I picked him up in my hand. He kind of sniffed around, you know, kind of walked around and then he flew back. He said, okay, this guy's not a threat and went back. Um, drones, uh, you can tell drones because they have the big eyes and they have big bodies. They're nearly, I mean, they're the size. I mean, this one was the width of two regular bees. I mean, the width, the, his width. He was a big, fat boy. And I've got a picture, you can check out this picture. Um, and uh, I, um, you know, I've set them up in the hive, I've put in some frames and they're all over the frames which have honey and stuff. They're like, holy cow, we have found paradise. They're, um, I saw this morning too, I saw one carrying out little white things. So some, whether that was a, a, a mite larva, uh, it probably was a mite larva, roll of mite larva. It was carrying it out and uh, kicking it out. So. Uh, these roll, I mean, these, these bees are like, they mean business. And uh, ultimately, it's great to see feral, these are feral, meaning wild bees. Um, their instinct for life, their energy, they're so tame too. You'd think they'd be more hostile or anything else, and they're just as tame as, I mean, as gentle as tame. Um, I mean, they were loud and buzzing this morning when I got in there. I was a little worried, but I was like, you know what? I'll worry when they sting me. And they didn't. And then I, I want them to get used to me, so then after being with the hive, I went and weeded around and they kind of, you know, didn't really pay much attention. So, to me. Um, so, I mean, I saw first ones bring back some uh, um, pollen from uh, the, uh, the uh, you know what are they called the um, what are they called sunflowers? I was thinking of the, trying to think of the Japanese name. Um, gosh, I'm just horrible with names. But it was just fun. I mean, I could I could sit there all day watching. Oh, I saw the, them doing a dance. They're not touching the water. I mean, I've got fresh water down there. And they, I mean, I've, I haven't seen one bee on it, which means basically you just can't feed bees. They're gonna go out and find their own water. You can put water sticking in their hive. Um, I'm gonna try some sugar water to see if that will entice them to drinking the water. You know, the whole idea is to get them drinking the water. So I'm gonna try doing some sugar water in the water. The reason why is July, August is the worst time for pesticide in July, in Japan, worst time. So, um, and I saw the evidence of that. In July, basically, uh, the other jet who has 15 beehives is one. You know, there was there was at least a thousand dead bees in front of his hive. Now, is there's no disease or anything else? It's it's pesticide. So they get into bad water, they bring it back, and they start feeding it to one another, and boom. So I put water out pretty much the first time it was out there. But uh, kind of like the other bees, they just kind of like dropping their dead bodies in it. You know, it's like, oh, okay, let's just drop our dead bodies, bury them at sea. So, I don't know. Um, so I think anything else that was exciting, learning about the Japanese bees, I'm, they're different. Um, I'm not gonna delve in looking for the queen. I'm gonna give, you know, I'm basically trying to be very, very hands off as possible for at least, you know, really for at least a month, right? And um, I'm gonna run this red light. I just ran this red light because I'm gonna be late to work by now. Uh, gotta keep moving, keep trucking. So, yeah, I'm trying to be as, as hands off as I can to keep them, um, you know, not so, because she's just moving in. Um, I don't know. I want her to start laying and stuff like that. So I can't wait to see her though. My little queen. She's in there. 
And the cool thing is, is with, um, you know, I caught a swarm. When you catch a swarm, the swarm is actually the mature queen. It's the older queen. I'm trying to get my, where is my charger? Because it said low on juice. So the cool thing is with a swarm, you're dealing with the older matriarch. She has basically built up her old colony. She got food in there. She, you know, everything's going well. She basically uh, gives birth, you know, uh, um, queen, uh, a swarm cell is dropped, which is at the bottom of the uh, hive, which I really want to find. I want to find where the other hive is because it has to be in the area um, of the one that I was in. So I'm curious where it is. So now I know that there's bees near me, right? Um, I can try to find them, try to find the other one, which will give me something to do around my, you know. Um, and I knew they were there. The funny thing is, is that I, I uh, you know, I, I scouted a scout scouting out my bees. I don't know if you saw that video, but a Japanese bee scout was there. It was definitely him, you know, looking around and seeing if there was an entrance and really curious about the bees. So, anyway, so that's uh, so that's good news that there's another bee colony somewhere around here, and um, that I hopefully I can snag. But I have big hopes for this. You know, I have great hopes, kind of like any father has for their offspring, for the progeny. So I really hope that um, what I'm going to do is. I have her still in my what I call my queening chamber. That's what's called a queening chamber because basically once these bees build up, I can pull that chamber out, kind of lock it down, so they will they will naturally start spawning cells. And then I've got three other boxes, and I can just keep moving these frames to the other boxes. And as they you know as they put um, swarm cells down, and um, you know keep them growing so you know I can just base and then from there you open them up and put them into the bigger hives the six hives add frames to them and you know you're good to go so does that make sense so basically right now I you know she's actually in my she's still in the what I call the queening hive and I saw them they were dropping cone and going crazy with cone and I'm just gonna let them build it out that's gonna be kind of um, you know what however she wants it and then when that and her other and she starts moving around laying eggs and basically she has there's a strong colony in there then I cap that one I'm I basically um, you know move it out and kind of force it to have to queen right because it's too small they're gonna to want to get out of there because it's too small and they don't have enough for it um, and by moving it, the cool thing too is by, but because it's inside the original hive, when I move it out, the bees are still going to come to the main hive, right? So it's not like one of the problems with queening is like you pull out bees and you put a new one. I'm, I have like this hive within a hive technique. So pioneering a new way to raise bees hasn't been done before, um, and hopefully it will work well with the Japanese bees. Hopefully, um, and we'll see how it goes. Because I've got six hives that I want to. These are big hives that we can, you know, populate. Um, maybe, just maybe, I can get another hive going. Um, you know, uh, this year. Who knows? And the cool thing are these are Japanese bees, so they're gonna be hardy for this region. I don't have to worry about winters. Um, I don't have to worry about mites. The only my only enemy really is pesticide. Really, pesticide, no yaku. We have to worry about. And um, and I'll be selling the honey at twice, you know, twice the. You know, I'm gonna probably do it three times the price. It's Japanese honey, so. Uh, there's no competition, right? I'm the only one in this city selling Japanese honey. So I'm gonna be selling it for, you know, 30 cents a gram. 
know, it'd be expensive, but you know, when we've got, when we're selling 50 cents an egg and yada, 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 and we have the high-end clientele, I'm sure that they would love to be able to say, hey, this is Japanese honey from Okeda Farm. These guys are already, you know, these is the most expensive hotels in Fukui. So I have access to the high-end customers with, you know, my ventures. And of the name for my ventures is Motainai Ventures.